In the name of Christ Jesus, our Lord and our Savior, my dear brother and sister in the Lord. If you were to go out and talk to anyone who has built anything within their lives, they would always talk about the foundation. Doesn't matter what you're building, the foundation needs to be there, otherwise the rest of the structure could be in question. The foundation, even if it's a card stack and you're building this neat card house, if you're building it on a table that is so rickety that the slightest brushing of your hip against it will cause a massive tremor that will cause the entire house to fall. One of my favorite things to do when I was younger was to build sand buildings and sand castles. I had this massive sand pit in my backyard growing up, and I just played in it constantly. And it, it would never fail. I would build these houses, and I would leave them, and I'd be thinking to myself, tomorrow I'm going to come back, and I'm going to build more. But then in the middle of the night, what would happen is that the sand would dry out and all of a sudden I'd show up and it was nothing more than a little hill that was kind of formed. All the detail, gone. And if I ever tried to build on top of that, of course, that would be silly. Well, who builds on top of sand? And so when we think about the foundation that is what we have built on for 150 years at St. Paul's Lutheran School, it is something that stands forever. Something that is iron clad, rock solid. Christ Jesus our Lord. Christ Jesus our Lord is our foundation. It is on him that we have built not just our school, but our church. That everything that we have and all the blessings we receive are from him. They flow from his grace to us. And so as we look at what an experience we will have this upcoming year in celebrating the 150th anniversary of our school, we look to the source the source of all of these good things and the source of the good things that we have is Christ Jesus, who is our foundation and who is our motivator. There is no greater motivator in this life than Jesus Christ our Lord. Yeah, you could be motivated by some things, right? When you grow up, you're motivated maybe by your mother's threats. You know, if you don't do this, you're in big trouble and you didn't want to know what that meant, so you just did it. Or you could be motivated, you know, with positive reinforcement as well. If you do this, I'll give you this. And, well, of course, then we did it every once in a while if we indeed wanted it. But Christ Jesus, he motivates us in a way that we're not used to. The motivation that we receive from Jesus is not the push of the law, nor is it the dangling of a carrot, but it is a desire-based motivation that flows from what he has done for us. We call that a gospel motivation, and so we look at what that truly means as a blessing to us and how we are motivated, not because we have to, but because we want to, that we're motivated by his love and his sacrifice in our life. When we look back over 150 years as we celebrate this anniversary, you can imagine that there were plenty of high peaks and there were plenty of low times. There were challenges, there were difficulties, there were money shortages, there were money surpluses, but maybe not too many. But over all of these years, what never changed? The foundation, our motivation, never changed. The foundation was our Savior Jesus, and our motivation was to share the love of Jesus. And so as we look at that, we take a look at what that means in light of the Holy Word of God as it is written in our Gospel lesson from John chapter 6. 
On hearing it, many of his disciples said, this is a hard teaching, who can accept it? Aware that his disciples were grumbling about this, Jesus said to him, does this offend you? What if you see the Son of Man ascend where he was before? Spirit gives life, the flesh counts for nothing. The words I have spoken to you are spirit and they are life, yet they are some, there are some of you who do not believe. For Jesus had known from the beginning which of them did not believe and who would betray him. He went on to say, this is why I told you that no one can come to me unless the Father has enabled him. From this time, many of his disciples turned back and no longer followed him. You do not want to leave me too, do you? Jesus asked the twelve. You see, as Jesus was laying a foundation in our chapter 6 of John, you see him laying a foundation that was difficult for people to understand. It was something that, as Jesus said in our lesson, had to be revealed to them by the Heavenly Father. Their eyes had to be opened. Now, for many of you, your eyes were already opened when you came to the baptismal font when you were a young child. The words of Jesus were a joy to you and a delight. These are things, however, that are not so easily known and recognized by all people. And so these disciples, or disciples, let's put them in air quotes, they, they were really struggling with what Jesus had said. And if you remember back to last Sunday, Jesus said some very difficult things. He talked about the eating of his flesh and the drinking of his blood. In fact, these disciples who had then abandoned him, they started spreading the rumors that the followers of Jesus were cannibals. For they eat flesh and they drink blood. This is just crazy. And not only that, because of the spiritual ceremonial cleanliness that they were very much caught up into as Jews, they were afraid that if they would get caught up in this whole eating of flesh and drinking of blood, that makes me unclean. And there's nothing that I should do in this world that I should be unclean. All of this played into this factor of this foundation that Jesus was laying for his disciples to stand upon. But that foundation that he was laying was, you need to trust in me. And all the disciples, as they were resorting back to what they were thinking, they were scratching their heads, they were looking around, they are saying, can this be right? And they started to dispersed. They started to walk away. They, they even looked at Jesus. This is hard. This is really, really hard. And Jesus asked them a question that we probably hear far more often maybe in today's day and age. Does this offend you? Does this offend you? Yeah. What does it mean to give offense these days, huh? If I say that I agree or disagree with some political standing, that causes a whole lot of people offense these days. And Jesus, all he was doing was telling them about the bread of life. He was telling about the gospel, the good news. And this is what was offensive to many people. Because he was sharing with them this foundation that he was laying that everything good comes from his heavenly Father. Everything good flows through and to and from Jesus. And this, all of a sudden, it is offensive. Not to our new man at all, but to our sinful nature. You see, our sinful nature gets offended by that because that means that it's not what we do. It's not how hard we work. It's not how many good things that I can put in the wind column for me. It has nothing to do with that. Instead, it has everything to do with Jesus, that we need to rely on Jesus. And so as we look at that foundation that Jesus was laying and the offense that the people were taking, they were looking at it and they were not stepping onto that solid foundation. It was more as if they were missing it and they were stepping on that soggy sand. They didn't exactly know or understand or feel like they got what was going on, and Jesus saw this. He saw the men that he had been preaching and teaching to. Some of the other men, they started to leave. They started to walk away. They started to desert Jesus. And so Jesus looked to his closest 12 friends, his 12 disciples, and he asked them, you don't want to leave too, do you? 
You know, when all of a sudden things get hard, that is when we are tempted to leave, isn't it? When all of a sudden all the chips seem to be down, it seems as if we're going upstream, it seems like it's just so hard, it just seems like it might just be easier to give up. Think about how many different times we face challenges in our lives. And think about over the last 150 years how many different challenges that the people of God here at St. Paul's face with their school. Life as we know it is not easy. Life in doing what God tells us to do is even more difficult at times because the world's not on our side. The devil is against us. And our sinful natures can trick us. And so we're motivated then, aren't we? We're motivated to turn back to the foundation, to, to reassert ourselves onto Christ Jesus our Lord and to hear from him what he has done for us. To help us understand that we have hope that there's reason for our excitement, there's reason for us to be joyful, there's reason for that, and that is because he does not leave us without any hope. He is the bread of life. He is the foundation of our life. He is the one who has done it all for us. He died for us. He atoned for all of our sins. He made us clean. He gives up himself for the forgiveness of sins. He is the very source of every good thing that we have in this life. He is the source of every blessing that we have experienced over the 150 years of the history of our school and the 150 plus years of the history of this church. What an amazing and unreal gift that he has given us. Because I don't think it's very hard to think about the challenges, right? How many things in this life last that long? Can you think of many things that last for 150 years? You cannot name many things because it's rare. But solely by the grace of God, we are still here we are still drawing our lifeblood from the source of Jesus Christ our Lord who is our foundation and he is the one who then motivates us to go. You see Peter being motivated by Jesus as well. He's motivated by the source of what Jesus has given them and that is the words of hope. As Jesus looked at his disciples and said, you don't want to leave too, do you? It was Peter with his boldness. You know of Peter. He's always the first one to talk, right? And he looked at his Lord and he said, Lord, to whom shall we go? You have the words of eternal life and we believe that you are the Christ, the Son of God, the Holy One of God. And so there it was. The motivation for Peter to stand on that foundation and say, you know what? I'm with you. And there's our motivation as well. Where else are we to go? There's no other place to turn. For as we celebrate this momentous occasion, we turn with joy to our Savior and rejoice in the blessings he has and will continue to give us because he is the source of them all. No matter what foundation you build on, foundations over time will decay. That is the neatest thing about Christ Jesus our Lord. As we have just sang, on Christ the solid rock I stand, all other ground is sinking sand. Christ will never decay. His foundation given to us will never waver. It will never get rickety, it will never crack, it will never go away. And it is upon him that our legacy lies. A legacy that is firmly and deeply rooted for 150 years in Christ Jesus our Lord. This is an amazing time in our history. And what a joy it is for each and every one of us to be able to experience this day. 
in our Lord's house. Amen. Please stand.